I've been feeling like a motherfucking postman Sending letters to the people All the sellers that I got I'm like an old man Hold up when you're old man Let me back up in this bitch I'm cutting them in this bitch I'm rapping in this bitch What's going on guys, it's Garen, today I'm guys a video on some mascot text logo designs and I haven't done a tutorial in a while, it's been like a way over a month and the reason behind that is I was planning on getting a new logo and intro and everything done for myself but uh, a lot of things got put behind but uh, everything's back in motion now, I'll have my logo done in a little bit I'm getting kind of like a mascot logo done for myself so it'd be a lot more cool to brand with and everything like, like that so uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd do one of these cool tutorials for you guys. And before going with this, if you guys are interested in buying one of these from me, you can either contact me via email, you guys can contact me through Twitter, and I'll definitely give you guys a really nice price on this. It's gonna be really low, it's actually really easy to do all of this stuff, but uh, if you guys don't want to do it and you guys want me to do it, definitely contact me, either one of those, both will be in the description below. So let's get it right into it. Here's an example, I just used the word design, and uh, I'll be showing you guys exactly how I did it and what I did to do this. So I'm pretty much just going to delete everything. I'm going to start off with a plain black background. You guys can choose any size. I think my width is 1920. And my height is probably like 700 or something. And uh, you start off by typing any word you want. So you can just type in like design. So what I like doing is keeping everything lowercase for one reason. You'll see that, see that pretty much next. If I put it all capital, it just looks really weird because all the slants are the same way. So if I just type everything in lowercase, it just looks in a lot nicer. If you guys are wondering what font I'm using, I'm using, uh, it's like the Doom font. It's called Amaz Doom, and then I'm using the right regular. So I'm going to up my size a little bit to probably like 300-ish. I'm going to kind of center it. And uh, what else I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to highlight the first, let's just say, three letters and I'm going to use the left one oops so what basically changes is the way the kind of indents go nothing too fancy it's just like indents and then you can mess with these but uh it's pretty much the same thing so uh, next thing you guys want to do is just look at it if you guys want to get rid of that extra little square of the eye just rasterize the type and then delete that in control x so you just have pretty much just one word so uh Probably the next step everyone wants to do, which is probably the easiest slash hardest step, it's kind of, it's different for everyone. We want to take your background and you want to put the background to, let's just say, a white. And you want to click on your text, right click blending options and go to stroke. And you guys are going to put a black stroke on the outside, normal, opacity 100. And this is really where you want to customize the size you guys want. So... You gotta keep in mind you're gonna have another stroke on top of that, so I recommend using around like the high 20s ish, or like excuse me, the high 20s, like 30s. And after done with that, just hit enter, and you guys are pretty much set. So uh, the next thing you want to do is make a new layer and put that below it, and then go to your stroke and lower the opacity. So right here is pretty much our guidelines of what we're gonna want to do. And the next thing you guys are want to pretty much do, which is gonna help you make the uh, kind of spikes and stuff a lot easier, if you hit Control H and then just drag in rulers to every point on the bottom, it just makes life a lot easier. So just grab one there, one there, and uh, you don't have to do this. It just helps when you're making simple stuff like this. So you guys can see I'm just putting my kind of guideline rulers down where I need them. And I'll just finish this up right here. So I don't need that one right there. And I can put this one right here if I need it. Just pretty much wherever you guys want. And then what you want to do is grab your polygon tool right here and uh, what I'm going to call it the lasso tool. And you want to start off by just clipping everything. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the start from pretty much kind of the middle-ish area and just click right there, hold shift, go to the corner, and then hold shift again and go down. And this is when you want to choose pretty much whatever length you want. Just kind of eyeball it and then go up. Kind of click where the point is. You can hold shift and go down, but I kind of keep like keeping the same angle. And you're pretty much going to want to do the same thing for each thing. The reason why we did the rulers is because that's where we're going to have the points end. So, let's do it there. Then I'll go up. 
down, up. Pretty much just to keep everything nice and smooth. And then bring this up, and then you can pretty much just kind of end these right there. Right click, go to fill, go to color, and just put this color to black. And then you have your text kind of border. You can hit control H and get rid of that. And then you can take your opacity, put it back to 100%, right click, go to blending options, and take the stroke off. And then you guys will have pretty much this. So the next thing you want to do is just change your background back to black, and then go to your pretty much that little block you made, and then go to stroke and put it. Now you're gonna put the color to let's just say white, and you're gonna put the stroke on inner, and put the size down to like let's just say ten, actually even less, probably like eight. And then you want to start with your text. So. Basically, with your text, you guys can do a lot of things. I'm just gonna just show you guys one example. What you can do is right click, go to blending options, and then go to color overlay. And you can put, let's just say, a blue color. Try to keep it kind of a more of like a colored blue. Hit OK. And then you wanna rasterize these and then merge these two layers so it creates this. And then you wanna make a new layer. Grab the blue, same blue using your eyedropper tool, and then create a rectangle. So if you put it kind of wherever you want on that, and then you can overlay it using clipping mask, holding alt, and then you got a cool kind of gradient, and you guys can lower the opacity if you want. Go to right click, stroke, put it in an inner stroke on, and then grab the same blue color and put the stroke on like size 4-ish and then just grab this color code hitting control C hitting OK and then if you go back to your stroke on the inside you can add that same color code and you can mess with the stroke some more so let's just say you guys want to use this as it is um it's pretty much the most generic way to do it there's other things you guys can do let's just say you want to kind of clean this up a lot more if you make a new layer and then you can kind of spike these out and put your rulers back on this is if you want you can pretty much make these more of a defined point just like this and then you guys connect them and what this basically does is it creates the the more like a pointy effect and it's more of like you didn't just use a stroke path on Photoshop it's like you actually did it yourself so you go to make a color you fill it in you just use the same color code and then you can deselect it all and it'll just look a lot smoother like that and uh, it's pretty much the most generic thing. There's other stuff you guys can do. Let's say you make a new layer above everything and grab your color tool. You guys can totally put like a big brush. Let's say I put this on the size like 800. And then you can slow the opacity. So that's one thing you guys can do. You guys can also merge all these layers. Hit Control J. And then make the bottom back one bigger. Go to edit. Perspective, excuse me, transform perspective. Just make one side smaller, one side bigger, and pretty much make it on like an angle. Put it in the back behind everything. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just lower the opacity. And if you kind of erase some of it, you get a really cool effect of like a background effect, and it looks like a really cool mascot logo text. So there's definitely other things you guys can do with this. There's other ways you guys can add these to make it look nicer. As I'll show you guys an example right now, if, even if you just go to Dribble, and uh, Dribble is a really good designing website. The only part of bad part about it is I'm not even on it yet. You guys need to be like an invited, so it's whatever. So if you just type in esports, you guys will get a bunch of logos and a bunch of text ideas just like these. And uh, it's pretty much the same generic way of how people do it. There's really endless ways. It's just different fonts, different kind of styles. So uh, you can definitely take this and put it to your own. As I said, you guys can even use the uh, bevels and emboss. What a lot of people do is they'll take like a font, let's just say we'll take a T. 
and they'll blending options will go to bevels and emboss take the white out put the black to 100 soften to zero and they'll put the depth up and they'll just mess with the size maybe even they change it to emboss so they'll change it to pillow emboss outer bevel inner bevel really up down a lot of people can change the way they do it and then what they do is they'll make a new layer and they'll take it and they'll go like this so they'll just take the colors and let's just say we're going to use a kind of like a grungy orange and we'll just do this as an example for you guys that and then you guys can just pretty much copy and paste this on the other side you don't really have to redo that only thing we do is change the uh the other side to a more defined ending and then what they do is since they have all this put together they merge them and they take the t and they hit Control j they hide the background stuff and then they'll either take the emboss off and they'll just highlight it over and they'll just like lower the opacity and they'll just mess with different colors so let's say put the opacity on sometimes they'll put it to like a light gray and what they'll do is make a new layer and they'll zoom in and then they'll just connect these just like this and they'll just fill it in with a darker color. So, you guys can easily see that there's many ways to do this kind of stuff. And uh, there's no like one like you have to do it this way. There's a lot of examples. And let's just fill it, finish this. And even if the lighting is not correct, I don't think anyone's gonna really say anything to you. So uh, that's basically one way that people make mascot logos or mascot text, tes blah, tesks, text, tesks, whatever you want to call it. And then they'll just merge it, right click, blending options, go to stroke, and they'll put like an outer stroke on or something. And they'll make it like a distinct other color, like a more of a kind of, not, I don't want to say medieval color, but more of a darker color. Or it's either they'll put something like that, or what a lot of a lot of people are starting to do is they'll put a, uh, a stroke on, but instead of a color, they'll use gradient overlays. And what they'll do is they'll put a darker color here, and then they'll grab even a darker color, and then they'll have this kind of a kind of reflective color like that. And it's basically the same thing. What everyone else does, they make a uh, a new version, and they'll merge it. And you guys will pretty much have your own little logo. Look at that. And it took us how many minutes? It took us 13 minutes to make something like this. And it's definitely something really easy, really sleek. So you can have something like this, and you got something like this. Really your choices are endless a lot of good examples are on dribble and i'm not going to say on here just to go and copy people i'm going on here to get like ideas and it's definitely a good website to use uh, behance is a really good website as well and definitely you guys can find your own stuff to do so so basically that's all i have and uh if you guys enjoy this tutorial definitely leave a like and a comment on the video if you guys want to make something like this you guys don't have the time you guys want me to make something for you please contact me on twitter or on email i'll do this for a really low cost if you guys say it came from youtube it'll be like a couple dollars or something really something really cheap but uh definitely an effective thing so uh i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did leave a thumbs up thank you guys for 60 i think 6200 subscribers almost i think i'm like 20 away and i uh, really hope you guys enjoyed this i'll be coming out with more tutorials soon after i get this new logo and everything situated so i'll see you guys in my other videos peace out